Whether you want to show it on a turntable for a demo reel or because you have to export it to a game engine that way, say because you're not using Unreal Engine's root motion, you sometimes need to make a traversing animation to play on spot. Now, Motion Builder offers a couple of ways to do that and I wanted to go through all of them today. And at the end, I will show you a bonus way uh, to get the best possible result. Hey everyone, my name is Matt and we're here talking about gameplay animation. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll get to work. Alright, so for that video, I'm gonna be using this running mission. As you can see, it's moving forward and we want to kill the forward motion. So the very first option, probably the easiest one, is actually a built-in option in the Motion Builder's control rig. And you're gonna find it in the modifiers. So you wanna look for your character in the characters list, double click on it. And then all the way down, you're gonna have a category called modifiers and then something called in place. Now you can, let's check all three axes and see the result. You're gonna have something not really natural just because we've completely locked the, the hips on all three axes. And that's not something we want, right? We want to only kill the, the forward motion. So in my case, my character is moving towards the Z axis. So I want to preserve the, the Y, which would be the up and down bouncing. And I want to preserve the X axis, which would be the sway of your hips, kind of, you know, swing left and right. Let's see what we have. Way better. Way better. Now, if you display the control rig, I just uh, use the control A shortcut to just uh, cycle through the X-ray modes. What is actually happening is that the control rig is still technically moving, but the visualization of the mesh is not. So if you only plot your animation and then remove the in place, you will still have the, um, the, the, the old animation with the forward motion. So what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna actually copy the stake and I'm gonna give it a proper name uh, for us to remember the different results. And that is in place. Uh, no, let's try the lock option. I'm gonna lock the, the Z axis and what you want to do instead, you are, you're gonna have to plot your animation to the skeleton. Back to skeleton. Now your skeleton is actually exactly doing what you want. And now you can plot it back to your control rig in case you want to do some extra uh, work on your animation while it's already on spot. Now the second option is pretty straightforward too, but this time we're not gonna be using the control rig, we'll be using the skeleton instead. So I'm gonna go back to the original take, which was the run modified, and I wanna make sure I don't have any uh, lock check. This is the DL animation, and once again I'm gonna copy this take, and I'm gonna rename this one, I don't know, skeleton option. Right, so uh, just plot your animation from your control rig to your skeleton just to make sure they're synchronized. And now what you want to do is actually to select the, um, the hips or the pelvis or the root. I'm not sure uh, about the hierarchy of your characters. And you wanna go to the F curves and on translation, you're gonna have to see where is the forward motion. So in that case, it's pretty simple for me. It's on the it's on the the Y uh, component. So what you want to do is actually to drag and select every single key except the first one and just delete them. And then naturally your hips are not moving forward anymore and you have an identical result as with the control rig option with the lock option. Now these two techniques are fine as long as you're making standard animation, especially using bipeds and at higher speeds, because if you run or, or trot, uh, your hips, your, your, your pelvis translation is actually very close to being linear. 
Now, if you want to start working on animations, say, of a wounded person or a zombie walk or a, a four-legged creature trotting, for example, you're gonna start to introduce something that's nothing close to being linear. And the problem with these options is that there's no way you can do this. Now, I want to show you a third option that will be uh, that will enable you to kill the forward motion while preserving the back and forth translation relative to the the root the reference of the character okay so i'm gonna go back to my uh, original take and i'm gonna create a third but last take that i will rename the perfect option let's make it that way now i'm sure there are many different ways to get to uh, what we're about to do uh, but let me show you how I will personally handle this. And now what I want to do is to create a layer. And then on the first frame, I'm going to key my character and I'm going to create a, a character pose. And then on the last frame, I want to paste that pose, but uh, making sure I do not uh, preserve the X and Z, meaning that I need to have both unchecked. Uh, meaning that I want to erase the current frame with the components from the pose. Just key it here. And now what you'll have, what you'll, the, the result you'll see is this, just because by default, uh, when you set keys, they're flat. So we need to correct this in the F curves, selecting the hips effector and on the, the Z component here, select both of your keys, set them to linear. And now you probably get the impression that this is the exact same result as we, as we had with the two first options, but actually it's not. And here's why. If we take a look at, uh, let's go back to the first option and display the trajectory of the hips effector from the side, it is gonna be actually pretty tricky to see, but it's completely flat, it's gone. It's completely flat, right? On the z-axis, it's not moving. It was locked, we killed this. So we knew about this. Now, if we look at the same thing on the third take, you will see that this is very different. We still have the local back and forth motion on the, the z-axis, which if for that animation, you can see it's almost linear because the, the, the motion is almost flat. But if you had something very nonlinear, then you will still be, you will still have access to that uh, forward motion, the, a local forward motion, and that makes all the difference. That's it for today, guys. I hope this was useful. Take care of yourself, have fun, animate on spot, and see you soon. Bye bye.